if you give any kind of blowback whatsoever, he resorts to name calling. <laughs> so, or telling me that he wants to keep me on a short leash. He actually said that at one of the meetings. He wanted to keep me on a short leash like I was some kind of a dog or something because I have opposing views. Talk about control freaks. In Pickering, Ontario, City Council is stifling debate and discussion and even press freedom. For example, if someone says something or posts something on social media that is deemed to be negative towards a city councillor, that person shall receive a visit by a bylaw enforcement officer and be served with a notion of trespass? No, seriously. Several citizens have received such notices prohibiting them from venturing onto city properties due to committing the sin of wrong thought. And check out these censorious measures. Delegation times have been slashed from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. There is no longer a question and answer period. Media outlets have to be approved by two-thirds of council in order for the journalist to cover the meeting. Recording meetings on cell phones is now against the rules. And there are allegations that the live feed of council meetings are allegedly being manipulated and censored as well. Unbelievable. Oh, and by the way, members of the Durham Regional Police Service are now commonplace fixtures at council meetings, always on standby to remove or even criminally charge those who do not behave. So what's going on here? After all, I thought the city of Pickering is situated in the Dominion of Canada, not the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And joining me now is the one councillor, Lisa Robinson in Pickering, who has resisted this censorious behavior. And yes, she has paid a price. So Lisa, thank you so much for coming in all the way to Toronto um, during another uh, hellacious traffic event <laughs> and being in studio. Uh, we covered the last uh, Pickering uh, City Council meeting uh, last um, month. And uh, surprisingly, uh, we did get the necessary two-thirds vote to be deemed worthy enough to cover the meeting along with the Toronto Star. But uh, in the big picture, Lisa, what in blue hell is going on in Pickering? Why is this council and this mayor using so many control measures to shut down debate and discussion? I, I think they enjoy being almost like a dictatorship, I would have to say. They seem to really enjoy censoring the people's voices. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only... You know, as you mentioned before, bringing delegations down from 10 minutes to five minutes and removal of question and answer period. Um, the trespassing, as you mentioned, anybody can trespass. It doesn't have to be an authoritative figure at the city. If somebody doesn't like what you're saying, they can just ask you to leave. And if you don't leave, then you're going to be trespassed. And I guess what they did, probably I think it was back in May or so, somewhere around that time last May, not this prior May that just happened, um, they actually increased the fines, too, from like $65 to like $650. <laughs> yeah, and that has to do with social media. So, And it's not even saying something about a council member. If you talk poorly about the city of Pickering and if they know who you are, underneath their new nuisance bylaw and their code of conduct policies and whatnot, they can actually just trespass you. It, it, this is astonishing. Uh, first of all, Lisa, and you know this full well, if you're in the political game, I think you need to have Godzilla thick skin. You know, uh, the old sticks and stones rhyme, you know. Mm -hmm. um, names should never hurt you. And secondly, is this an actual appropriate use of bylaw enforcement to be using them as thought police? And because you said something wrong, you're being trespassed? Surely somebody who's received one of these um, fines, Lisa, must challenge this in court. I question the constitutionality of such a charge in the first place. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And nothing has been challenged in court as of yet. But, you know, even the, the people that they're doing trespass notices for, I mean, there was a, a grandmother. She's in her 60s. And, you know, it took four police officers to move her out when she said that she was leaving. And then she got a $650 fine. And, of course, they had to leave 
um, Pickering, to, I can't remember where the woman lives, not that I would say it now, but they actually left their jurisdiction to go and give her the, the trespass notice. You know, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. And um, my theory is since the last um, municipal election was 2022, when you got the new mayor in, uh, Mayor Kevin Nash, um, if you look at the timeline in a way, uh, Lisa, because that $650 sum resonates with me, it's almost as though they really dug the clampdowns that came with COVID. We saw governments of every political stripe, of every level, municipal, provincial, and federal, um, they got a taste of totalitarian power and wow, did they ever like that taste. What say you? Absolutely. They love that. They love being able to do whatever they can. And, you know, now that we also have strong mayor's powers, mm. that was something else. Like, you know, even our mayor now, when he was running in the last election in 2022, he was asked numerous times, what about the strong mayor's powers? Are you going to use them? Are you going to use them? And his answer every single time was no. And of course, <laughs> that is the first thing he has done is he's used the powers and he's used them even for for all kinds of different things. He's used them so many times already to write letters to the minister to like revoke MZO orders or like, you know, with Doug Ford to to impose restrictions. And it it's we couldn't even as councillors, we're not even included in the budget. Mm. So how are we gonna represent our constituents properly if we don't even have an input on what our constituents want and how we should be spending money for our budget in Pickering? Mm. Lisa, speaking of mayors, what do we know about Mayor Ash? He's a rookie mayor. He won uh, the seat in 2022 when the incumbent mayor uh, declined to run. He seems to be really putting his stamp uh, on this council or, or, or these council meetings by, um, it's kind of, it reminds me of the old song, uh, Home on the Range, you know, where seldom is <laughs> heard a discouraging word. He doesn't like any blowback, it seems to me, or am I misreading the uh, lay of the land here? Nope, you're absolutely right. If you give any kind of blowback whatsoever, he resorts to name calling. <laughs> so, or telling me that he wants to keep me on a short leash. He actually said that at one of the meetings. He wanted to keep me on a short lease like I was some kind of a dog or something because I have opposing views. And, yeah, he doesn't like it. If constituents say anything negatively on social media, he'll call them, he'll openly call them, like, nutcases or, you know, they'll, he'll tell them to go have another drink or you're a conspiracy theorist or you're a Robinson supporter. Like, that's supposed to be a bad thing, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's name-calling is what it is. They won't even have a debate anymore and have a conversation. And you know what, Lisa? I, I'm not so much opposed to colorful language, you know, because it adds some, you know, uh, life into a... Uh, a municipal council meeting. But I am opposed to a double standard because as I alluded to in the introduction about you paying a price, uh, that is literal. You have lost three months worth of salary just for proposing ideas that they took offense to. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, there were, th there were three things that I was doing for my constituents that my constituents had brought forward to me. And one of them was that the, the flags on government buildings yeah. that, you know, we should be just flying only governmental flags on flag buildings. We shouldn't be flying special interest groups because we all know it does create a hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. And no group should be above another. So the town of Norwich, just before I brought this forward, they had brought it forward and their yeah. council had passed it at the time. Right. So I thought this would be a great one to bring forward. I did a lot of the research, but of course, no, they, it was right before pride month last yeah. year. So of course they decided to say that I was transphobic and homophobic, even though I didn't even mention the pride flag whatsoever. I said any special interest groups. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it, but in the report to the integrity commissioner, they made it seem like that I wanted to get rid of the pride flags, which wasn't truth. It was like all special interest groups. Another motion I was trying to bring forward had to do with um, drag shows, pride events, and mm -hmm. drag queen story time. And I just wanted to put an age restriction on because I've had a lot of the parents of Durham and surrounding areas all reach out to me. They're not happy about what's happening. So I thought, you know what, a good compromise would be 
why don't we just put an age restriction on these events? Because yeah. we we know there's a lot of lewd entertainment at these Pride events. We've seen it downtown Toronto, you know, naked people just walking around or, you know, dog yeah, collars. Funny that, how they don't get charged with public indecency. No, they don't. It's like, you know, they're allowed <laughs> to do that. It's, it's kind of crazy. I don't understand why the police would do that. It's like, you know, that double standard. But yeah. I'm surprised that we're seeing it from our police officers, to be quite honest. Yeah. It's kind of shameful. Um, so I tried to bring that forward, and I chose the the age limit of 18 because I thought, you know what, this would be a good negotiation tactic to use the age limit of 18. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, we could probably lower that down to, you know, 14, 15, because I think children are a little bit more secure and they don't have to worry so much about, you know, these different ideologically, ideologically is being, you know, um, imprinted on their on their sensitive minds in that but of course no i was transphobic and homophobic for that the third violation had to do with our recreation center over in pickering and what i wanted to do was when when covid hit they had revamped the whole entire center so they have a female change room but you have to be a member and over the age of 18 in order to use it yeah. and then they have a male change room but again you have to be over the age of 18 and you have to be a member to use it Everybody else, whether you are a member under the age of 18 or if you're there, just there using our facilities for the day, no matter how old you are, mm-hmm. you're being forced to use the universal change room. So I was bringing forward Wait a, a motion. Wait one second. Yeah. Should, is this being done to accommodate these guys who identify as females? And um, because if it is, wouldn't it make sense that they use the universal change room? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Be, yeah. <laughs> so so now imagine if I had a daughter who was 14 and yeah. I'm a member over there and my daughter is also a member over there. She can't come to the same change room with me at this time. She would be forced into universal change room and then I would have to make the decision. Do I go up and like, you know, go to my member be member change room because I'm over the age of 18 or do I have to go and make sure that my daughter is well taken care of knowing that there's men coming in and out of the change room. So... I So my motion was just to give every little man, woman, boy, girl the choice to either use a biological bathroom change room of their choice or they could use the universal change room, which is inclusive of all genders and families. Is common sense under the ban in the city of Pickering too, Lisa? It seems to be. So three months worth of salary just for having the temerity to to put forward these kind of motions. Unbelievable. But the funny thing is too is that i didn't even get to bring these motions forward oh i only spoke of them so these were like draft motions that i spoke <laughs> in front of people and asking my fellow counselors to second them for me so i didn't even get to have them to the floor to debate they said no we're not even going to debate them so they won't even second them so we could have a conversation they're shutting down conversations everywhere if they don't like what i have to say they shut it down and the personal person responsible for the finding that's the integrity commissioner uh correct correct Check out this uh, clip, folks, of the Integrity uh, Commissioner in action. <laughs> Miss Integrity Commissioner, um, my first question is, um, was Councillor Brenner, Cook, or Nagy present at the DDSB board meeting on May the 15th? Uh, through the mayor, the report is self-explanatory, and I am not prepared to go into the details of the investigation at this time you can you can answer i'm i'm sure i think the the answer is they were here no they were not no she never answered she never answered you just answered that for her anyway let's let's continue please so okay so the integrity commissioner could not answer that question so she no i think she made uh, her her findings are in the report thank you mr mayor um so was um Janice, if I may call you that, was school trustee Emma Cunningham present at the DDSB meeting on May the 15th in which I spoke? Again, through the mayor, uh, Councilor Robinson, I am not going to walk you through our investigation, who was where, who did what. The report speaks for itself. I think I've spoken in great detail of our findings. It's before council. 
With all due respect, that is not in the report, and that's very important to know as to whether or not this is hearsay or double hearsay. So, you know, it's it's my reputation. I'm sorry, please don't roll your eyes at me. It is my reputation on the line because question, you are question. calling me transphobic and homophobic. So I would like to know, are you aware with trustee Emma Cunningham? The, the question has been posed. She didn't answer the question. She's indicated her findings are based on an investigation. Did you meet with anyone else to investigate anyone that I asked you to speak with or investigate um, on my side in my defense? Did you meet with anyone? You said you did a full investigation. Did that investigation include anyone that I asked you to investigate? So through the mayor, again, counselor. Yes, you don't need to answer that. I've also indicated the role of council is to is not to conduct its own. It's okay, everybody. Um, but please, with all due respect, Mr. Mayor, I must assert that denying me the opportunity to ask these questions and to receive adequate answers is an unjust act. Well, there you go. Uh, doesn't want to answer the questions. It looked like her tag team partner in council was the mayor, mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking for her. Um, what do you make about that? Does she have some sort of agenda, uh, Lisa? I would think that she would have an agenda, absolutely. But you got to remember, though, our integrity commissioners are paid by the corporation of the cities, every right. single one of them. Right. So it's not like, you know, they're really an independent integrity commissioner. They are being paid. So we all know how that works, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it's almost, though, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the integrity commissioner is kind of... Uh, integrity challenged i would have to say so um she's definitely biased yeah. and you know i am going for a judi judicial review this some um, september because she what it does was, that mean well because it was a biased report the integrity commissioner is definitely biased against me you okay. know i came to her with a problem she calls me a cis woman i show her the, <laughs> she called me a cis woman so she had the nerve to label me i don't need any labels thank you but you know i was also telling her about the books that the parents are coming to me and saying about the books on the on the shelves that like you know the high schools the junior schools and uh, like you know the gender queer books and everything else so i brought this to attention and i showed her some pictures of what was in some of these books like you know little boys doing fellatio on other little boys or talking about blades of grass or touching themselves with their driving and all she could say to me she couldn't even answer that to me but because I'm a mom, all she could say well, was, well, what about The Handmaid's Tale? Or what about How to Kill a Mockingbird? It was like, that had nothing to do with it. Just completely disregarded anything that I have to say. But she's been doing that in all my reports as well for anything that I'm trying to put in against other um, council members or the mayor. It's unbelievable. If you think we're exaggerating, folks, about what's going on in council, um, just watch how things happen. Just watch. Uh, how triggered uh, Mayor Ash gets, check it out. I just want to reiterate something that I said at a council meeting a while ago, is that, you know, Councillor Brenner had threatened me earlier last year that he would be, that he would stick a knife in my back and slowly twist it. Mayor, and, I would never, Brenner, and I would never know so until he was pulling Councilor, it out. Councilor. Okay, so in my opinion then, um, I would just like to say that this is just another one of those twists of that knife in my back. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I don't think that's an appropriate ending to your debate. Uh, Councillor Brenner. So there you go. And the disturbing thing, Councillor Maurice uh, Brenner. Brenner. Yep. I want to sharpen my sword and decapitate that MF, I don't want to say the word. I'm just figuring out how I can sharpen my sword and decapitate the mother. First of all, who is he directing that towards? And secondly, is there an integrity investigation about that? Mm -hmm. Well, that whole entire comment was actually directed towards our mayor. But that's not the first time that he's made threats like this. Yeah. He's actually also made threats to me where he said, you know what, Lisa, I can stick a knife in your back. I could slowly twist it. And you would never know until I'm getting ready to pull it out. And that's exactly at the point of the stage that what he's he in right now. That? that sounds grotesquely violent to me, Lisa. It is. It's very violent. It's very scary. And, like, you know, to also have him say things now about decapitating the the mayor and sharpening his sword i mean 
to me, these are criminal intentions, and, you know, I think it needs to be dealt with. But I have put in integrity commissioner reports for okay. the same thing, and they do absolutely nothing about it. They won't investigate it. And I even said this at our council meeting, every single one of our council meetings um, and the mayor, council members and the mayor, they they know about this tape, mm. right? And, and they, ha they haven't done anything about it. They've never pulled me aside to say, you know, do you know about this tape? Are you okay? Like, is there anything we can do? Like, absolutely nothing. Well, Lisa, since there are armed members of law enforcement at every council meeting, that's something new, too, uh, in case somebody misbehaves, air quotes. Uh, maybe you should direct your complaint uh, to that. That might meet the benchmark of criminality. I don't know, but maybe mm -hmm. uh, since law enforcement is at every meeting, maybe you can talk to one of the uh, boys or girls in blue. It'd be great to do that. I have brought part of this up with the with the Durham Regional Polite Police um, a couple okay. of times actually with a with a certain individual and um, again they haven't really acted on it as of yet maybe because and I mean I could just be speculating here but in my opinion and a lot of people's opinions is that you know our mayor well he's got very close relations of course with DRPS but also last year, he actually sat on the police services board oh, when he no. was regional counselor. <laughs> yes, but um, he had to step down because he did take a vacation during COVID while him and the rest of the counselors were telling everybody else to stay home. And while, you know, we had all of those elders that were dying alone in Orchard Villa, we had one of the highest rates of deaths was in Pickering at Orchard Villa. It was close to 80 elders that had to wow. that died and they died alone while our counselors and mayor was telling everybody stay home you know you can't have people over for dinner you know there so, was also so he pulled a, a rod phillips uh the uh, ontario pc mpp he did um, who recorded those fireside chats um, you know, around Christmas time. Uh, meanwhile, this son of a gun was down in the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you know, Lisa, the hypocrisy is off the charts. It really is. Yeah, we had we had two of our counselors that were away on vacation, actually. So Mayor Ash, but at the time he was a regional, and also the other regional counselor, Bill McLean, he was also away at wow. the same time. While people were dying alone, it was it's it's sickening. It really is sickening. Lisa, is there anything you can do in order to fight back? I don't know your financial situation. I don't know if you have allies in your corner, but um, it's almost from some of the comments said about you, and we've gone over some of them, from the penalties uh, based on, as far as I can tell, um, politically incorrect thought, if you will, it seems like intimidation. It seems like bullying. Um, and maybe it's time to strike back against the bullies well there is there is a give send go out there for me right now that someone had started but you know i also just had the integrity commissioner ask me about that as well like i have some kind of control over it i guess they're looking to see if you know it's appropriate or not but i haven't received any monies and you know i didn't start it and yeah. any money that is raised will go for legal fees right it's not going to me directly exactly. so exactly well look on the bright side lisa they didn't freeze your bank account yet <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. Um, I'm going to extend uh, an invitation for Mayor Ash to come in and um, rebut what you know what you've had to say because you know Mayor Ash maybe I've got it wrong with my line of questioning. Maybe uh, Lisa Robinson has the wrong thought press. So uh, check your email box. I'm going to give you that invitation. Uh, do you think he'll uh, take up the invite, Lisa? Well, there has been a couple of newspapers that have reached out to him and he refuses to have the conversation with them. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm just saying, like, you know, after having you there at the last meeting, a couple of the counselors and himself, they weren't too happy, let's say. Um, so I wouldn't hold your breath, honestly. Okay. I mean, I hope so, because yes. it would be great to hear what he has to say. Hey, we're I all mean, about the other side I would of the even story. love to be here with him and have a debate because he will not have a conversation with me or debate me. And uh, But he likes to keep you on a short leash on he likes head. to keep yeah. me on this rough rough bark bark <laughs> unbelievable yeah, absolutely lisa let me tell you thank you so much for coming in in person and i think you're a very brave and courageous woman you're a one woman gang on pickering town council i think you are on the right side of history uh don't let the you know what get you down 
Keep fighting, Lisa Robinson. A pleasure. Thank you so much. And I can I can promise you, I will never, I'll never give up. I'll never give in. You will never see me step down from my position.